Because he said that he was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and his flesh, or his Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so uh, we know that he is that chief cornerstone, amen. Uh, he is the foundation of which we build our life upon. And when we get saved, we, we build our Christian life upon the Lord Jesus Christ. If you build your house upon a rock, when the, when the winds come and the storms blow, that house will stand. But if you build your house upon the sand, then when the winds come and the storms blow, I, I think about how that your, your house will begin to fall, it will begin to sink in the sand. I'm glad, though, that Jesus is my foundation. Amen. They already had the foundation laid for this new temple to be constructed, but because of the adversaries, they paused their work and they said pretty much, you know what, if, if we're going to face opposition, then I'm not going to go forward. But that's not what God called us to do, amen. God knows that we're going to face opposition in the work of the Lord and he knows that we're going to have, have adversaries from time to time, uh, but we ought to press forward and we ought to move on, amen. And we have the foundation laid. The, the foundation today for us is Jesus Christ and we can build our church upon that foundation, amen. The rock that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Would you consider your ways today? He said, you've sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there's none warm. He's saying your garments, the clothes that you put on, they're not getting the job done. You're eating, but you're not getting full. You're drinking, but you're not drinking enough. You're malnourished. You think that you're all right at your home. You think that you're all right worrying about things around the house. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you ought not to worry about things around home. I know there's, day, there's days and there's times, there's things at the house that have to be done. But I think the Lord's telling us here, don't let it come before the Lord's work. Amen. So many people today on my way here this morning, when we passed CJ's in Bell Green, there was about three or four uh, trucks hooked up to a boat, and they was headed to Cedar Creek or, or Little Bear, wherever they was headed. But I thought about how they was putting things before the Lord's work. Amen. And there's a lot of people that do all their grocery shopping on Sunday. I don't believe you ought to do that. I believe it's the Sabbath day. We ought to keep it holy. Amen. And I, and I believe that in today's time, there's a lot of people that, that they underestimate the work of the Lord and they don't really uh, take it for what it is. They don't respect it the way they ought to. They don't respect the house of God like they ought to. They don't, they don't dress up for the house of God like they ought to. Amen. And, and, and they, they've neglected the house of the Lord. And I think about how he says here, you know, you, you've, you've earned wages and you put it into a bag with holes. And he says, you're more worried about the things around your house being fixed. And you're more, more worried about the things in your family that's going on than you are about around the house of God. And... Uh, I don't know who this is for today. The Lord put it on my heart, but as far as I'm concerned, everybody at church, they, they really supported our revival. And I appreciate it so much. I mean, it's encouraging to a pastor to walk in and to see the members show up. I've been to so many places before, the members don't even come to the house of God. And, and it breaks my heart for somebody to call themselves a member, uh, but they won't even show up. Amen. I, I'm, I'm glad that, that you here today are faithful to the house of God, and you're willing to come and to receive God's word and receive the fullness of it, amen. But uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking a lot today about how people, they, they miss out on the blessings of God because they don't put that as a priority in their life. They don't, they don't prioritize the work of the Lord in their life, and they miss out on the blessings of God. I've seen people today, they, they put other things before the Lord, and then they wonder why they ain't getting blessed in life. But if you keep God first in all things, you can be blessed, Amen. If you let the Lord lead and guide and direct your path and, and consider your ways, are you, are you letting Jesus direct your path today? Uh, have you said, I, I will deny myself, I will take up my cross daily and follow him? Or are you trying to lead your own path? Are you trying to walk your own way? He said, consider your way today. And, and are you following the Lord today? When you get saved, I understand you get saved and you follow the Lord's commandment and believer's baptism. Baptisms don't save you, but you... I believe any saved individual will get baptized if they have that opportunity. The thief on the cross wasn't able to, but I, I think about how the Lord has commanded us once we're saved to get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But once we're baptized, that's not where the work stops. Amen. That's where the work begins. And we ought to work for the Lord till our dying day. And, I, and I've heard of preachers before, they might say, 
Well, I retired from the ministry. Let me tell you today, I'll retire from the ministry when I take my last breath. Amen. I want to preach the word of God as long as God will let me. If I'm in a wheelchair up here uh, 70 years from now or, 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 or 50 years from now, I'm, if I'm in a wheelchair uh, preaching the word of God, praise the Lord. Amen. I'll be glad to go on for the Lord. I'll be glad uh, to preach the word of God for him. And I don't know what may come my way in this life, uh, but as long as I have breath in this body, it doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are today, uh, God's got a work for us to do. And I believe the people of God, we ought to have a mind to work. Amen. And we ought to keep our priorities in order. Your priorities may not be in the order, the same order as mine. And you might need to rearrange the order of your priorities. You might need to put the Lord first and put everything else other behind Him. Amen. My, my priorities today is, is, is God is, is the number one. My family is number two. The church is number three. And, and, and everything else goes beyond that. Amen. But, but I, I believe that God has is, 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 is commanded us in His Word uh, to make Him our priority. Amen. And how many people in this day, they have other priorities than the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't have Him as their priorities. Or their, their, their head priority, rather. And uh, let me tell you, blessings from God are contingent upon if he, whether or not he's your priority. Chapter 2, you read about the divine presence of the Lord. You read about the divine power, the glory of him, his divine glory, and the divine peace that he can provide. But certainly when you have Jesus first in your life, you will feel his presence, amen. When you have Jesus first in your life in the church, you will feel his power in the house of God. You'll see his glory manifested in the house of God. And when you have Jesus first in your life, you will experience peace, amen. And I'm thankful today that we have peace in our heart because I've got God in my life. But I have peace today because I'm keeping him first in my life. Somebody that's saved, if they don't, if they don't put the Lord first in their life, I don't believe they have peace as far as being in fellowship with the Lord. But God... He wants us to have fellowship with Him, and He wants us to have peace with Him. You can uh, prioritize the Lord. You can keep Him first in your life individually. You can keep Him first as a church, as a family. And, and I know that our nation has, has forsaken the Lord, but 2 Chronicles 7.14, the promise holds ever true, amen. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then while I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and I will heal their land. If we would, if we would uh, understand today, that if we can submit to the, pro the pro promise of God, God would bless us today in, in our efforts for Him. God could turn around this country today if we would submit ourselves to him. He said if my people. He's not talking to lost people there. He's talking to the church. And what that's telling me. Is, is some of the church. Some of the saved believers today. Have forsaken the Lord. In their walk. They've forsaken the Lord. In their work. And today would you. Would you make him first in your life. You may be saved. But you may be out of fellowship. But today I, I encourage you to. Examine yourself. See whether or not you are encouraged by the word of the Lord, see whether or not you are working for him on a week-to-week -week basis. And I'm not just talking about Sunday meeting, amen. Sunday morning service is good to, good to come to, but if you can make it to Sunday night service and make it to Wednesday night service, amen, the Lord has commanded us that we come to the house of God when the doors are open, amen. I believe we ought to, we ought to obey the rules of the Lord. We ought to obey the commandments of him. We ought to respect the house of God. When you come to the Lord's house, you can certainly gain strength and you can feel his presence. And uh, people think Wednesday night Bible study ain't all that important. It's just as important as Sunday morning. Amen. I certainly believe that with all my heart. And, and some of you may get mad at me today, but I, I want to tell you, Wednesday night Bible study is key for a Christian. I believe that. In, in the day in which we live, I know a lot of churches, they, don't have, they may not have Wednesday night Bible study. A lot of them may not have Sunday night service, but I believe if your body of people is meeting, it's good to go and be with them because you can gain strength from the brethren. Amen. I, I believe it, it's hard in this day and time uh, to feel the presence of God on Sunday because uh, we don't meet with Him throughout the week. We don't read the Word of God uh, like we ought to throughout the week. We don't uh, pray like we ought to uh, throughout the week, but we can uh, uh, be more committed if we come on Wednesday night. We can be more committed if we come on Sunday night. We can be more committed if we show up early for church and have a prayer meeting. Amen. We can be more committed to the Lord's work if we would get our priorities in order today and uh, a lot of kids here today it's hard for me to preach amen a lot of kids being loud today I don't I don't know what's going on this morning but I understand 
Oh, the Lord, he's, he's, he's gifted us with these babies around here, and I praise the Lord for it, amen. They're not going to keep me from preaching, amen. I'll just have to get louder on you. And so y'all, y'all might as well just tone, or turn up your hearing aids if you need to. I'm going to get loud. And, and, and I want to tell you this morning, I appreciate the Lord's house. I appreciate his people coming to the house of God, and I appreciate all the children around here. But because these children are around here, I think about the work that needs to be done, the work that needs to go on, amen. We ought to work in the Lord's work because of these kids, if for nothing else, amen. When they grow up, they're going to need to see an example. They need to see us living right for God. They need us to, uh, to see that the preaching of the Word of God, it will help sinners when they get in trouble. They need to see our lives for what it is and understand uh, that mom and daddy, they go to church when they need some help, amen. When they're struggling in life, they go to the house of God or they go down to the altar and pray and ask the Lord to help them. They need to see us in as, an, as an example today and that we work for the Lord and they ought to have that desire as well when they get older, amen. And the Lord has give us some commandments in this word for us to work for him. But I want you to consider your ways this morning. Would you consider the ways of God, consider his commandments that that he's given us, and would you ask yourself the question, am I pleasing the Lord in all that I do? And uh, that's a very convicting question if you'll really ask that question to yourself. Am I pleasing the Lord in all that I do in my life? I want to make my mom and daddy happy. I want to make the Lord happy. Amen. I want to make my wife happy. I want to make my daughter happy. I want to make the Lord happy. Amen. If he's really such an integral part of our life, if he's really so important to us today, then why is he not an important part in your life? I mean, if he's so important to to a child of God, to a believer in this walk of life, if he's so important to us in this work that we're in, Why do we put him on the back burner? Why do we use him as a spare tire from time to time? Why don't we put him first in our life and the Lord will bless us? Haggai said, if you you continue the rebuilding of the temple, then the the blessings that God has paused in your life, the, the, the blessings that he is not giving you in life, he will start those blessings back, amen? And you may have lived for God years ago, but you may have drifted away, you might say, well, it's just not as important as I thought it was. If you live for the Lord, I can promise you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, He'll bless you in life. You say, preacher, I'm just kind of torn today. I'm kind of discouraged because all these things have taken place in my life. All these things have happened to me in life. And uh, I'm not really wanting to work for Him anymore like I used to. I don't really have that zeal. I don't have that desire. I don't have that burning on the inside of me. But would to God that would the saints of God once again be stirred up on the inside? If there's ever a time to, to be stirred up, it's the week right after revival, amen. The revival did not end Friday night. I want the revival to continue in the weeks ahead, amen. And the people of God, when we show up to the Lord's house, we ought to have a desire to meet with Him today, amen. We ought to have a zeal to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth today. Would you stand this morning? Would you consider your ways? Would you understand that the Lord, He wants to be first in your life? He wants to be the priority in your life. He wants to, uh, you to come to Him and let Him lead you in life. And today, would you come while we stand, while we sing?